gonna call it. But it is definitely about empathy. Now I get a lot of people slide into my DM asking me, Aaron Moses, I have all this sensitivity to the energy surrounding me and I don't know how to control myself. I always find myself in these situations where I'm feeling drained, I'm feeling super anxious, I'm feeling all these things that I don't wanna feel. Now, if you ask the right person, Aaron Moses uh, doesn't have a lot of empathy. That's not fucking true. And anybody who tells you that, fuck them. Because I do have empathy. The difference between me and somebody who can't control their empathy and their sensitivity to energies that surround them is I have total, I'm not a perfect being, obviously, but I have control over what I can feel. And this comes from just just my life, just me going through life and the universe trying to mold me to be the best that I can fucking be because I have a great relationship with the universe. We've always had a great rapport and some people just don't get that training. Other people do get that training and they just ignore it. It's not that they fail, they just ignore it. So how to control your empathy and now you know what if i didn't go through these things i would have no idea and i'm gonna all right <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking really fast all right so the first thing i want to tell you is if i didn't go through these things i really wouldn't have too much to teach you now that's pretty much like you asking somebody who's naturally good with women which i'm definitely not how do you get girls if you ask somebody that then they say i i don't know i just be myself bro i don't know girls just like me and that's fucking annoying but i have logically and rationally thought about these things and how they've affected me and the great thing about this is till i was 20 i'll just throw that number out there till i was 20 from age Seven to 20 is when I was in that zone where I just didn't have to feel anything for you if I didn't want to. When I turned 18 is when I started, you know, getting into the spirituality. And then I had some, some stuff going on with my heart chakra. And then I lost, then I became super sensitive. Then I had extra empathy that I never fucking had before. I was doing a heart chakra meditation and I was walking with my friend somewhere and we were walking through a field and um, we crossed over the train tracks and I saw a moon. It wasn't full. It was close to it though. And I just start crying, bro. Just tears. I was like, bro, look at this moon. It's so beautiful. And they're like, bro, what the fuck is wrong with you? And this is when I was like, we were sober too. This is when I was like 20, 21. And around that time I was going through a lot of issues pertaining to the heart chakra and my empathy. And then again, universe kicked back in and trained me back up. And then I went back and I regained my control of my empathy. But that is probably the most, that in the time where, you know, I used to be, of course I was in Chicago at the time. So it was a lot of anger. It would be people walking around angry as fuck. And it wasn't even like they were actively angry. They were just angry as people. And I would just be shaking, like my shoulders were tense and I'd just be shaking for no reason. And I had this like twitch in my head and shit and it was, it was bad. So I'm gonna give you, <laughs> I'm gonna give you some steps and I'll probably tell, tell a couple stories on um how to control your empathy. I'm not gonna give you steps. I'm more so just gonna give you, you know, I'm just, I'm just gonna give you some information. So. What you need to know, the first thing that you need to realize about controlling your empathy is the three is three universal laws, right? The law of polarity, the law of gender, and the law that says the universe is mental, right? So the first thing we need to do is you need to identify your issues. Now, as far as gender, what is what is an imbalance? What does a feminine imbalance of empathy look like? Your friend has this wonderful girlfriend. She does everything a good girlfriend is supposed to do, but she end up, you know, sucking a dick or some shit like that. And then what's the first thing that a lot of dudes that either have a really close relationship with their mother or they 
don't have a good relationship with their mother or that feminine energy, you say. What do they say? Man, I'm never going to trust these hoes ever again, man. These hoes ain't loyal, man. What a lot of dudes fail to realize is that's some, that's some, that's a feminine trait. That is something that, that's something that a woman would do. You know, that's something that an imbalance, not even a woman, okay, and I'm not even going to go there, but that is an imbalance of feminine energy that comes from your, a bad relationship with, with empathy, a bad relationship with your emotional body. Now, on the other hand, when a woman breaks up with a, when a female breaks up with a male, a lot of the times they try to heal themselves with sex then they don't even mess with that dude, but they go from relationship to relationship to relationship. That's some that's some masculine shit. That comes from either no, that I've never I've never met a female that had a great relationship with their father that that uh, indulged in that behavior. But jumping from relationship to relationship, that is is nothing that I'm not going to I'm not going to label these behaviors as bad or good or negative or positive but what i will say is that comes from you not having a good relationship with your own heart chakra not having a good relationship with the energies that you respond to that surround you now with that being said the law of polarity you cannot be a good you can be a good healer and you can even be a great healer but you can't be the best healer that you can be without knowing how to hurt and this is just a basic principle of magic when i was uh w when i was learning to work with the element of fire what the universe the guys told me is i need to i need to become more familiar with the element of water because they're polar opposites because if i want to work with fire how i'm working how i desire to work with fire I needed to build that relationship with water. I needed to drink more water. I needed to take more baths. I need to go outside when it was raining. I needed to, you know, soak my feet, you know, put, have a bowl, have bowls of water around me all, at all times before I even started to play with that fire. Not because it's harmful or not because it wasn't even just physical fire. It was the elemental fire, the spirit fire, everything, you know, trying to get back to my Aries roots, you know what I mean? But you need to understand that if you want to control your empathy with how life taught me, you need to be able to feel a lot of love. This is why I started talking with love, talking about love. You need to be able to can, you need to be able to feel and set yourself up to win as far as you feeling a lot of love and you need to you need to feel murderous hate for somebody you know where the term cold hearted cold blooded comes from because when you are seconds away i'm not i'm not talking about like hurting somebody a little bit i'm not talking about like king their car up or burning their house i'm talking about you're looking this person in the eye and you are like contemplating can i really do this 25 years can i really move a body can i really chop this where can i really go get some lot like you're really and the fucked up thing about it is when you feel this your heart just you can feel the exact size of it your physical heart and your heart chakra but at this point we're talking about the heart chakra and you can feel the physical size of it and it's just cold it's like a missing it's like nothing in there there's nothing in there and it's cold and you can just feel the blood in your in your arms and the, on the under part of your arms just it's cold and you don't really think about it but you can feel it and you're thinking i could kill this person right i could kill them i could kill you right now you don't even understand what i'm feeling right now and then it, it's just everything's so clear everything's so clear and it's past being angry it's like a new angry it's not even an ang it's like you're when you're angry you can't really think as well as you should be able to but when you feel this coldness when you feel that it's you can think the anger is like outside of your body i don't know if it just transforms or what it does where it goes but 
Yeah, I mean, I take that back. I'm not going to take it back. But not everybody, the fact that not everybody is going to feel that in their life, not everybody's going to feel that. But you definitely need to feel like you really dislike somebody. Like you hate somebody. You can feel murderous towards somebody without hating them. That's two different things. But you have to be able to feel love and you have to feel the opposite of that. Now, some people might call that fear. Some people might, I mean, yeah, the opposite of love is fear. And that murderous feeling for me came out of, it was triggered by fear. It was triggered by just having a fucked up childhood and being reminded constantly of uh, of those feelings. And then having it come from the person who created these feelings. And it was at the worst possible time in my fucking life. So... You need to be able, you need to feel love and hate. Now, of course, the universe sent me a whole bunch of fucked up ass relationships, which is how you get that middle. This is how I got the middle. I had a whole bunch of fucked up ass friends that left me for dead. I had a whole bunch of fucked up ass female fucking girlfriends. I had a whole bunch of um, just foolishness, just a bad relationship with people. But, uh... If you want to heal the best that you can heal, you need to be able to hurt the best that you can hurt. Now, another thing that I want to tell you is I read, and you can do the research yourself. I read an article when I was writing a paper that said that uh, athletes, athletes, and uh, any anybody who physically trains, the more pain that they experience while they work out, the more happiness that they can experience in their life. And this is because that's just how the brain works. So the more the more pain that you feel, the more the higher capacity that you have to feel happy. This is why I feel this is why females are a lot more expressively happy. Expressively happy. I don't think that's the right. They are they express their happiness a lot more because they actually feel a lot more. Not only because not it's not the fact that females feel more emotions. It's the fact that females feel more pain on a day-to-day. -day. They feel more negative on a day-to-day. -day. This is why they can feel more pleasure. And they have a higher capacity. You might be able to laugh. Let's say if there was a laugh scale, right? From zero to a hundred. The average male might only be able to feel maybe a 60 because their pain is really only a 60 or how much they perceive pain is really only a 60 or a 40 but if a female feels 70 they perceive their pain whether that's physical or mental they perceive their pain as a 70 and they can feel a 90 they can laugh on a, on a 90 you know so that's how it works the more pain that you feel the more pleasure that you can feel. And then when you sit, when you meditate, and when you consider the levels that you've been at, then you can then you can really not fucking feel things if you don't want to feel them. Mentalism, of course that's self-talk. Attraction and love are two things that people that are mostly not a choice. You're attracted to things because, just because. You can't you can't explain it and this is why when i was younger and more immature and more a lot more into myself and narcissistic and arrogant and all of that females would ask me why i like them and i would say you know logically i give them a logical answer bill not a fucking science guy and i say you know what because and then i would just you know spill and i'm like so why do you like me and then be like, I don't, I don't know. I just, I just can't explain it. You just make me so happy. And I'm like, what? You better come up with a, re I just gave you this, this, this. I did a PowerPoint presentation and you can just tell me I make you happy. What? And I just get so fucking angry. But the fact of the matter is not everything that you love 
and that you are attracted to can be logically explained. Not everything that you fear can be logically explained. Not everything in between can be logically explained. But at the same time, you can turn it off. You can turn it off. How do you do that? Don't look at the shit. What did my mother always tell me? I'm from Atlanta, bro. So I'd be like, I would be very uncomfortable going to specific parts of Atlanta for whatever reason. You know, if you know anything about Atlanta. And you know what my mom would say? She would say, don't look at you. Don't look at what you don't want to see. Why are you looking at this shit? If it's making you uncomfortable, focus on you. Stay in your fucking bubble. And um, that's what I always give people the advice. They tell me, you know, when I was, especially when I was a teenager, she shouldn't even told me this shit. I mean, she should have, but <clears throat> I was just abusing that, you know, with the whole me pulling on my pants and, and people saying that they don't feel comfortable with me doing certain things. I definitely brought that into my adulthood. Like, bitch, don't, don't look at me. Don't pay attention. Stop listening to me. You know, I can say whatever I want. Don't listen. Direct your focus somewhere else. But that's the advice I'm giving you, though. If you don't want to feel these things, if you feel like you're going into, if, if you just had a bad breakup and you just met the perfect person, don't pay attention to the motherfucker. Delete the shit. Delete the person off your Facebook. Tell them, you know, make the logical choice to turn them off purposely. The shit's, the shit hurts, bro. The shit hurts. But that's, we got to do, we, you get you got you, you got to do it though, man. Cause a lot of fear, you you don't have a choice. I mean, f most fears are a choice. Most fears are not fucking genetic fears and are not embedded down deeply inside you and are and are not super habits and phobias. <clears throat> but the genetic fears, you can even reprogram yourself to not fucking fear something that is supposed to be genetically feared. Animals fear fucking fire and sharp objects. We fear big ass animals. You don't have to fear those things though. Chickens fear fucking hawks. They are born to fear hawks. It's in their gen it's in their genetics. You don't have to fear these things. You don't have to fear anything ever again. You don't have to love I mean you don't have to choose to love anything. You don't have to pursue anything. <clears throat> that you love or anything that you're attracted to. And this all has to do with the mentalism, with the mentalism, letting your mind control your emotions. And of course, if you do any research on the heart, we know the heart, we know the body is, is you know, the rest of the subconscious mind that the scientists say they can't fucking find. They're just not telling you your body's filled with brain cells. They're not telling you that your spinal fluid has a lot of the same fluids that surrounds your brain. They're not telling us that. They're not telling us that there's brain cells in your intestines. They're not telling us that the heart has a hell of a lot of brain cells. If you watch a video, I think I have it on this channel. If you watch a video where I talk about the cold showers and how the warriors used to prepare themselves, making themselves uncomfortable so they can be comfortable with being uncomfortable so they can have less fear and more heart when they go to war. If you watch the video where I described my experiences with cold shower, the first thing that happened was my br my heart rate changed, my breath changed, then I had a thought. And that's how life is. Your heart perceives things before your body does. Your heart, your heart, not that's not what I meant. Your heart rate controls the emotions that you've experienced. Emotions are chemical reactions. Your heart dictates what chemical reactions are going to be created in your brain and your body does the rest of the fucking work for you. The fight, flight, or freeze. So what you do, I mean, I told, when people come to me and they tell me, my short answer is just meditate, void meditate, stop thinking about the shit and um, protect yourself with a sky blue aura and program it to not feel anything and then protect that aura with the fucking I mean shield with a silver shield with spikes sticking out of it but that doesn't work for everybody and of course I've been telling people I've been telling people that is you shouldn't be relying on bubble shields and shit like that for you to not feel super sensitive and super empathetic and it's not even this I mean I turned it from I mean, it, it it starts with the with the heart and the mind. 
Of course it does. But how you socialize, how you maneuver and manipulate yourself through life to your end goal or on whatever path you're on, it does start with love and fear. This is why I started with this. This is why I keep bringing up relationships and giving you these examples. I mean, a lot of people can actually relate to this in a real way. But um, what else do we have? I got my notes. Pain in your brain, hormones. Controlling your hormones, your hormones, your diet, how you socialize. Of course, all those things. The difference between the female brain and the male brain is the fact that women have more hormones to control. They have a, a better fully functioning frontal, uh, prefrontal cortex and their the setup of their brain it just makes a little bit more sense than the male brain the male brain's bigger because it's not compact as much and this is why hormones <laughs> get in the way when uh in a female's life because the brain is more compact it has this it's weighs the same it has the same amount of water and it functions pretty much the same but the hormones you know a man's brain is bigger because it's more spread out there's like uh probably seven or eight major things like the amygdala the prefrontal cortex and some other shit i can't remember that actually separates a male's brain from a female's brain but it's ultimately the hormones and a lot of dudes smoking that loud have hormone problems jacking off too much having sex with your girlfriend whenever she wants because you don't have balls anymore because you're in sperm bankruptcy bro Hold your hold your sexual fluids in, bro. That'll give you... If you're a male and you're watching this because you have empathy problems and oversensitivity problems to the energies in your life, hold your, hold your semen, bro. Hold your sexual male fluids. You need that shit just as much as you need water, bro. Hold that shit in. I know she's bad. I know she got a big old booty. I know she got titties to match. Hold that shit, bro. Hold. You're not gonna die, bro. You're not gonna die, bro. It's not that important. It's really, it's really not. If you have too much sex, it starts to become a chore. It starts to become annoying, and it really fucks up how how well you can think. It really fucks up how motivated you are. Think about when you're a teenager, bro, and you jerked off in the shower. You thought you were gonna wash your hair, brush your teeth, take this thorough ass shower, wash your hair twice, put the conditioner you just bought. No, but you bust that nut before you wash up and wash your hair. Nah, bro. Sometimes you even get out the shower and forget you didn't even wash up, and then you start stinking like, damn, I just busted a nut and left. But the think about that, because I know all teenagers, well, I don't know that for a fact, but I know that's that's happened to some of us in life. This is this is where your motivation is, bro. Your balls, bro. Okay? And then next, we have... Uh, uh, see, watch my video on the ego. The ego... The ego doesn't give a fuck, bro. The ego is like Project Pat. Project Pat don't give a fuck. The ego does not give a fuck, bro. Your ego does not have any empathy. Now, I'm not telling you to be egocentric and arrogant and narcissistic and a psychopath. Well, I'm telling you to tap into that ability to turn those things on and turn them off. When people come up to you, they ask you for something, just like I made it, I said in another video. If I sense you're motivating, uh, if you're, if I sense you're manipulating me in any way, I'm turning, I'm shutting down. It's an automatic no. If you ask me for something like, hey, Aaron Moses, can I get $5? I might ask you for what? If I don't ask you for what, don't tell me. If I don't, if you know I trust you or you know I don't trust you, don't tell me for what. Just ask me. Now, if you come up to me with a sob story, oh, it's an automatic no every time. Every time. Now, your ego doesn't have empathy. And I'm going to make a video on healthy narcissism, healthy manipulation, and using people healthily. There is such thing as healthy narcissism. We're all narcissists. If you're not, that's unhealthy. Just like healthy racism. There's such thing as healthy racism. If you're not physically attracted to your own race, that's a mental illness. You're crazy. That's not what this video is about, though. The next thing is breath. I'm going to make a video on breath and why I call my channel Life is in the Breath. I'm going to give you a little... I'm going to give you a little bit. 
how you jump through these different dimensions and what I'm what I'm essentially telling you is how to jump through these dimensions, how to transfer your your mind and your energy to different dimensions. The emotions are not the emotions are chemical reactions in your in your brain that commit that not commit that uh the emotions are chemical reactions in your brain that permit you to enter new dimensions and perceptions of reality. When you're in a new dimension, time is different, space is different, and people are different. Your emotions are how you perceive the space that you're in. How you perceive the space that you're in puts you in a whole different dimension. How you speak to somebody puts you in a whole different dimension. How you speak to your boss and how you speak to a 13 year old child is two different dimensions. You have to either lower yourself, raise yourself, or invite these people to your dimension. I don't speak to children like they're kids. That's why people think I'm weird. I talk to them like however age I perceive myself that I am. And they come to me or come to me, but I don't, I don't do that. You know, I don't fucking, unless, even fucking Jimmy. Jimmy's too. Shout out to Jimmy. People are like, why are you always talking to him like he's a grown ass man? I'm like, because, because he is a grown ass man. He's just not in that dimension yet. He's in a phase right now. He's a child. He's not going to, he's going to be a fucking adult longer than he's going to be a child. And I want him to perceive the world as a grown man in a child's way. Whatever the case is, I'm not a psychologist, but I mean, it worked for my little nephew, CJ, and he's pretty okay, so whatever. But breathing, right? I want him to fucking tangent, excuse me. When you breathe, your breath, <laughs> your breath is a way to easily switch these dimensions. There's really only maybe four dimensions you should be living in. You have the dimension of the sixth chakra. You have the dimension of the heart. The dimension of the sacral, which you're really not going to use that much. And when you do use it, you're not going to have to switch that on and off. It's going to be amusement park, bedroom, that sacral chakra. And then what Elliot Hulse, one of my favorite mentors, calls the dimension of the balls. The root chakra, right? It's not really... I'm not even gonna skip around like that. When it's time to, when it's time to breathe, when it's time to think, switch, and you can use visualization. If your visualization is on point like that, you can use visualization while you breathe, when you're making the decision, now it's time to think. Six chakra. Okay, I told you not to bounce the ball in the house. I'm gonna crack your head open. And then your heart chakra, when you breathe from your heart chakra, when you're supposed to be, when you're lost in the, in the middle of the jungle and you don't know where to go. Well, maybe you should do, use your balls for that one, but whatever you feel like you need to be using your heart chakra for, breathe to that specific part of your lungs. You need to learn breathing exercises and yogic breaths, Y-O-G-I-C, yogic breaths, to breathe from the different dimensions the different chambers of your lungs, which that's not what it's called, but the different parts of your lungs. And you can mentally separate these different parts of your lungs. When it's time to breathe, am I skipping one? No. When it's time to breathe into your balls, when it's time to use your instincts, your root chakra, that's when you breathe deep. That's when you expand your belly and breathe deep. This is when every time I invoke the elements or the planets, I breathe deep. I use this so it circulates. The root chakra is one of the main functions of the root chakra. Circulation that, didn't, that, that people don't teach you about in books. In books. You know, a lot of people don't tell you. And you I mean, you, you should be able to switch your consciousness. That's really what that is. Switching your consciousness to the chakras to make sure that nothing bad happens to you or that you get the desired out um, results. But the solar plexus is, is the second most psychic chakra in the chakra system, not the crown. I'll explain that in another video if you like me to. 
But the crown, the crown, the crown is an antenna. It's nothing. It's not that it's nothing psychic about it. Yeah, you channel through that, but it's not psychic in that sense. As well, as far as seeing, as far as intuition, as far as specific functions, the solar plexus is more psychic than the crown chakra, Sumi. But for you breathing, if you want to tap into that seeing energy, if you want to tap into that psychic energy, if you want to see a little bit more, a little clearer, a little better, if you want to sense something, your gut feeling, breathe into your solar plexus. You want to use your instincts, breathe deeply. You want to ground yourself so you can feel everything, so you can get into that alpha wave. Breathe in your root. If you want to do so, if you're playing with your kids and you're like, you know, I don't really don't fucking, man, he just broke this. I really don't want to play with his ass. But breathe into their heart. If somebody's talking too motherfucking much and you feel like doing something bad, mentalism. You know, your breath controls everything. Your breath regulates every fucking thing. But I'm definitely going to make a video about that. That's it, man. That's, it. That's everything I got. Heal, hurt, pain, choices. But how I... Just, just dealing with fucked up ass people, bro. Just fucking Chicago gave me the real choice to not feel anything. When I don't want to feel anything. It's not that I can't. I totally can. I totally can. And then, I mean, when you have a lot of messed up experiences, that trauma, I mean, every everything, a lot of people say life is supposed to be hard. Old people that didn't grow up with the internet say life is supposed to be hard. It's not supposed to be hard, bro. The struggle is not a part of the game, bro. You are supposed to be traumatized, but that's not the same thing, bro. If you grow, like I used to grow weed. The reason that you put the fan on the weed plant is not because it keeps the smell away. It's because when you stress that root, when you put that pressure on the plant to sway, it makes the roots fucking stronger, bro. When you put stress on the stem, it makes the roots stronger. Not because it keeps the smell away. Because if you're doing, if you know what you're doing, you can't get the smell away. So... <laughs> But um, we're supposed to be traumatized, bro. Let, let, let the universe traumatize you, bro. Let the pain in. Don't try to block the pain. You know what's going to happen when if you try to block the pain, it's all going to come in at one time. And you're not going to know what the fuck to do and you're going to kill yourself. You're going to do drugs. You're going to start having reckless sex with ugly bitches with no condoms. Just let it in, bro. Just let it in. Let it in. It's fun, bro. And then, I mean, there's dark pain and there's light pain. Let the light pain in. The dark pain is going to be there. It's going to be there. It's going to creep up on you. And if you have that light pain around you, inside of you, there's nothing the dark pain can do. And when I say dark, I don't mean dark like dark matter, dark energy. I literally mean bad. Shit that involves otherworldly stuff. Shit that involves very human things that you just don't want to deal with. Your puppy dying or you losing a thousand dollars. Losing a thousand dollars is light pain because if you're with the shits, the thousand dollars is gonna come back to you. But your puppy, your puppy's never gonna come back. He's gone forever. But that light pain will help you. It'll help. If you try to block it out and smile yourself through it like a crazy person, bro, don't do that shit. That sh that fucks with people. That's how you get a brain tumor. Let that shit in. That's actually a that's actually a, a topic in psychology. When you feel negative things, sometimes you just have to swim in it, bro. Don't let the negative, don't let people tell you to sit, ignore the negativity. Nah, bro. Sometimes you just need to swim in that pain. You need to swim in that hurt. You need to swim in that anxiety. You need to swim in that depression. Just lay down and just think about how fucked up life is. It's little kids in China selling their asses for $20 and... Fucking little kids in India digging through trash to feed their families. And, 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 this bitch just fucking cheated on you with your best friend. And that. Just swim in that depression, bro. Just sit in it. It's healthy. Don't let people tell you to just the 17 second rule when something negative happens, eliminate it. No, bro, fuck that. How are you going to deal with anything if you just keep ignoring negativity and pain?
the more pain you can feel, the higher capacity that you're going to feel out of this good stuff. Yes, when, you, when something good happens, over-celebrate it. That's how you attract more good things. That's how the universe sees, oh, this guy actually appreciates having this little shitty-ass job at McDonald's. Yes, I do, universe. You know, and then the universe gets you a better job later. Or the universe lets you find money all the time later. But you have to over-celebrate, over-celebrate, not turn up too hard. But if it's, a, if, it's, if it's good, make it feel great, but not with drugs and alcohol. That's not what I'm talking about. If you have a penny and you find the penny on the ground, act like you just found $100. Act like you just found the $100. The universe will see how much you appreciate abundance and money, and it's going to give it more to you. Now, as far as you swimming in your depression... The universe will see that you're with the shits and you can handle pain and will send you happiness. Now, the things I'm talking about, and I watched a video by High, um, High Priestess Creole Queen, shout out to her. She was talking about, um, shit, I forgot, she had that red hair on it. It was like last week. I forgot, what, how the fuck did I forget what it was called? Whatever the case is, she was talking about karma and how she doesn't believe in karma and how if you... She was talking about dark matter. If you don't believe in certain principles of the universe and certain laws and how they can affect you, then the chances that they will are lowered. Not that they're going to go away, but they're lowered. Karma, karma is a real thing. When I stop believing in karma, bad things stop happening to me instantly. And I could just do whatever the fuck I wanted. And then that didn't work because it just wasn't spiritually fulfilling. And I got real numb. And then I started doing good things again. Nothing bad happened to me. But these laws, some are mutable. 